What's going on guys? My name is Rob and today I want to talk to you about this really lightweight awesome application called Teslamate. This is similar to Teslify but with much better visualizations and you actually own all of your own data. It's not shared so it's going to be hosted on your own server and it's going to log absolutely everything your Tesla does from a temperature standpoint, from where you're driving, how much energy you're using, what's the state of the vehicle, is it charging, is it sleeping, and I'm gonna walk you through how to set this whole thing up in under 30 minutes. And just to show you a quick demo, you can actually pull it up on your Tesla screen. And just as a quick sample here, this is the trip dashboard, which takes into consideration everywhere your car has driven over a set period of time. Currently, it's just set to today, but I can just as easily click that and dynamically update it to say the last two days and now I can see exactly where my car has been how much energy has been used how much energy has been added time spent driving versus charging and this really cool visualization down here which is showing out of all time that's passed what's my Tesla been doing what's the current state of that Tesla so professionally I am a data visualization consultant and when I looked at alternative offerings like Teslify, the visualizations just weren't doing it for me. It looks like Microsoft Excel basic charts, not interactive like what you can do within Grafana. So I'd highly recommend if you're into data, analyzing things over time, take a look at Teslamate. It's completely free. You just have to pay for your own server to spin up, which is like five bucks a month. And I'll walk you through the entire process right now. So I hope you're excited to set up your Teslamate installation. Let's get going. I'll demo a few dashboards and then we'll actually go through the step-by-step -step tutorial where you can be connected to your Teslamate server within about 30 minutes time. Let's get going. All right, let's get started with a quick review of the various dashboards that come out of the box with Teslamate. Like I mentioned, these are using the Grafana visualization tool, which is open source. The first chart we're looking at is the charge level. So currently we have this set to the last seven days, but obviously if I had more data, you'd be seeing that here. This shows you your state of charge over time. So you could see how far you push your limits with what you're willing to let your Tesla get down to. Uh, personally, I've only ever reached the yellow zone in my Tesla, which I believe is sub 20% state of charge. But this would allow you to see overall what your charging habits look like given what the charging state is for your Tesla. Next up, we'll dive into the charges dashboard. And this just takes a look at every time your Tesla actively charges, how many miles you drive, what's your average miles per hour, what did you start and end at for your charging, what was your overall efficiency, kilowatt hours used. And now when we take a look at cost, you can see you can modify this if you'd like to. So let's, if you're supercharging, it would show up there as just a blank like this down here. So I would click this and then set what the charge cost was. But you can also automate this. As you can see, all these values here are filled out. And that's because I've set my home location, which is a geofence. And before I actually created this, it just showed up as an address. So I click this and now it brings me over to Teslamate and I'm able to set what the cost per kilowatt hour is for a given location. I know in my house it's 19 cents per kilowatt hour, so I just set that there. The next dashboard is the charging stats. And this takes a look at number of charges that occurred over a given time period. This is over the last 10 years, so I don't think anyone's really had their Teslas for that long. So let me just bring this to the last seven days. And I can see the number of charges that took place, total duration of those charges, how many kilowatt hours were added, and what was that total charging cost? These two charts down here, the heat map and the charge delta, they're fixed at the last six months, so I can't modify this to only show the last seven days. But you can see this heat map is starting to really come together here. And as this Tesla Mate application continues to record data, these will get more and more enriched. As we scroll down, we take a look at how this power was added. AC slash DC, total kilowatt hours added, what was the percentage of that? 
Obviously, they're all AC. And down at the bottom, it shows you where you've actually charged. I haven't charged my vehicle anywhere but my home. But if you have a work location, obviously, that would show up here as well. And then just we have our overall state of charge. So what, what did it charge to? What was the limit? I normally don't set my charge limit above 80% unless I'm going on a trip. So as you can see, Tesla Mate kind of warns you saying, hey, you might want to be careful charging your vehicle to 80%. Likely want to keep it around the 70 to 80% range. Um, so you can definitely see your charging habits show up here and whether or not you're exceeding what Tesla really recommends from a best practice perspective. Next, we have our drive stats. And I'll set this to just the last seven days. So we have some data here. So I've taken 22 unique drives, overall 170 miles driven and 49 kilowatt hours used. The median distance of each drive is calculated along with the distance driven each day and the median kilowatt hours used per day. This tool is actually able to extrapolate out what they believe the monthly mileage would be given these behaviors and also what it would extrapolate out to annually. And on the bottom, we can see that it creates this count of destinations that you've driven to. So you can start to see where you're frequently going Click on drives. And this is the same thing that we just saw. However, now it's being shown in a table format. So you can see all of your start and end points, what the duration of those drives were, what the distance was, what your charge looked like when you first took off versus when you arrived, what the temperature was, your average speed. And what's really cool is it shows you your efficiency per drive. So you can definitely start to see this dip down if you're really getting on the throttle on a given day. So and it's also really cool to see your average speed. If you click on efficiency, this just breaks down how efficiently we are driving the Tesla. And it also takes into consideration the temperature. As the temperature drops, so does the efficiency. The locations dashboard will show you a count of the frequent locations you've driven to, unique addresses, unique cities, unique states, and unique countries. I haven't left this state in the last seven days. So that's why it's just showing Connecticut, which is my home state. But if you were to drive, let's say on a road trip, you'd start to see all those states pop up here along with the corresponding destinations. Click on mileage and this just shows you over time what you've driven. So how many miles have you added to your Tesla? Down here, you can see I started with, in the past seven days, I started with around 13,320 miles. And I ended up with just shy of 13,500 miles currently. So the overview dashboard takes a look at what your current battery level is. So right now, if I were to pull up my app, it would show 70%. If I was charging, it would show what that voltage was along with the number of kilowatt hours that were added. My current range, what my current odometer reads. And then we have some temperature readings here, the driver's side temperature, the outside temperature of the vehicle, and then the inside temperature of the vehicle. Down here, we can see the charging details for the car. The blue is the voltage, 233 volts. The yellow line is the current amperage, and the green is the kilowatt hours. This axis is kind of screwy because obviously the voltage is gonna be pretty massive, so you can just click on the various colors here to see those visualized all on their own. And everything we're doing here, it's not saving. So as soon as you reload this page, it'll bring you back to the default view, which is really cool. So you won't break anything. Don't worry. All right. Next is the projected range. This one takes a look at mileage over time. So it's just overlaying that other mileage chart but also showing you what the projected range is given all of your driving behaviors. As we scroll down, we can also take a look at the battery level. So we now have this usable battery level, which is this orange line that's being charted out. And here at the bottom, we have what the outdoor temperature has looked like over the past seven days. So that blue is the temperature. So if I click that, you can see the temperature has flexed from a high of 65 
to a low of around 44 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can see the impact of having temperature swings and how that affects your projected range in the vehicle. Now let's dive into the states. And the states are what the Tesla is doing at any given period of time. So I can update this to the last last seven days. You can see I wasn't recording prior to March 9th. So let's just do the last two days. And now we can see that the vehicle has been online in this light blue. Then it was driven, which are those purple blocks, online. And then it goes to sleep. So I'm sure you're all aware of when your Tesla goes to sleep, you can't just walk up to it and unhook the charging cable because it has to first wake up. You can do that by opening the app. So this is an example of when that car is in that state where it's like in a deep sleep. When the vehicle is charging, you see these yellow blocks and then purple, you get the gist. So this allows you to see what percentage of time your vehicle has spent parked versus actually being driven. I have only really driven about a solid hour, which is 2% of the overall time that was spent with this vehicle in my possession. So you get why Elon is really pushing for this ride sharing ability where all this time with this vehicle isn't charging, but it's asleep. It could actually be making money for you. So that's the real push for him to get out there and begin to have driverless vehicles that could then be used for ride share. Next on the trip dashboard, this will show you a picture of every inch of ground you've covered with your Tesla over a certain period of time. Right now we're looking at this red line, which is the path that the vehicle has taken. So I haven't gone too far in the past seven days. Overall mileage driven. This pie chart here shows you the breakout of time spent driving versus charging. You can see just around four hours of drive time with around 10 and a half hours of charge time. So it just compares those two numbers. We could also see that the vehicle used around 66 kilowatt hours and added around 74.4 kilowatt hours. We see the same chart that we saw prior in the States dashboard. However, now it's just brought down here in this one view that consolidates multiple ways of looking at this data. As we scroll down, we can see the destinations that we went to along with the start points, information about those drives. And what's really cool down here, we have the battery level trended over time, which we saw already, but this brand new chart, which is measuring the elevation that the vehicle has crossed. So if you go up like a, a massive mountain, you would see this huge spike and you'd come out down that mountain. So you would see the elevation fluctuate. I haven't gone any higher than 315 feet and my vehicle is currently parked at 148 feet above sea level. I don't know how interesting that is to some folks, but I think it's pretty cool. Next, we have the updates tab. This will just capture historically the updates that come into the Tesla currently on 2020.4.1. And as the new update rolls out, we would see the new update on the top here with this row pushed down below, which keeps that lo update log for us. Next, we have vampire drain and you'll have to modify this minimum idle time in hours. So I'll just drop down to one here and we can see that I had some vampire drain of 4% on this day, 1% on this day, 1% on this day. So it allows you to just fluctuate the various idle time thresholds and then see what the state of charge was that was dropped. And lastly, we have the visited dashboard, which pulls together everywhere you've gone over any period of time. So. If you do a massive road trip around the United States, you would see a giant map of the United States with your vehicle crossing all the states. So if you're making a scrapbook or whatever, you can probably pull some of these, these images to import in there as well, just to capture the whole experience. And I think the most fascinating part is all this is just happening in the background, recording all that data, and you don't have to lift a finger. You simply just log in and access these dashboards. Okay, to get this kicked off, let's head over to tslaspot.com forward slash teslamate setup. So on the top here, the first thing we need to do is register a new domain that we'll use for our teslamate server. 
So head on over to namesilo.com. All right, now I'm going to pick any random domain name I want. Rob's Tesla. Let's search. Looks like it's available. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add. And make sure it's a .com that you use. Pick whatever word combination or number combination you'd like. And now we're going to check out. And make sure to use the code TeslaMate. And then I'll drop the overall cost down a buck. Go ahead and enter your name servers as ns1. Volter, V U L T R dot com, and NS2 dot Volter dot com. Click submit. Continue. All right. And if you don't have an account, go ahead and create one now. I already have one, so I'm just going to log into mine. My credit card information is already stored. And I'm going to go ahead and place the order. And if you don't like Name Silo, feel free to use any other domain register you'd like. These guys are absolutely awesome and they're dirt cheap. They're a no BS provider, so I really do recommend Name Silo. I use them for all of my domains. I actually recently moved them all from GoDaddy over to Name Silo, and I'm saving a ton of money. But at any rate, our domain's all set up and now it's pointed to Volter. So we can actually just close out of this tab now. And we're going to spin up a new server at volter.com. Make sure to use this link right here because it will give you $100 of free account credits to test the whole platform out. So make sure you click this. Make sure to sign up to receive $100 in account credits. And I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. But once you sign up, you will get $100 of account credit that will be attributed to your account. And now I'm going to click this little button here to deploy a new server. Making sure that cloud compute is selected. And for a server location, pick the location that's closest to you. I'm based out of Connecticut, so New York is the closest. Now for the server type, choose application. and then hit Docker and choose Ubuntu 18.04. Keep on scrolling down. And now we have the option of choosing what server size we'd like. We're fine with a $5 a month, 25 gig, one CPU, one gig of memory. So we'll select that. And you can scroll all the way to the bottom and just give your server whatever name you'd like. It, ha it really has no ties to anything. So Rob's Tesla, just to keep things consistent with my domain name, deploy. Okay, so now our server is being deployed and installing. This will probably take about, I would say five minutes to complete. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just fast forward the video until that time. Okay, so it looks like our server is all good to go. And we can verify that by just clicking into it. And we can see this little button up here, View Console. If we click that, press Enter, we can see that we're now able to log into the system. So we're good to go. So you have the option of using this little console here, but I would not recommend it as we'll be copying a whole lot of text from this website. So if you're on a Mac, we'll just close out of that. Click on search, go to terminal, and you can SSH into your server. And we do this by copying the IP address, which is right here. Type SSH space, root at the IP address. You press enter, type yes, and now it's prompting us for a password. And that's, it's this root password right here. So 
we've revealed the root password. Let's copy that. And paste it right in. And we're logged into our server. If you're not running on Mac, I'd recommend using the application PuTTY. That's P-U-T-T-Y. It works very similar to the terminal window here, which allows you to SSH into your server. All right, so now that we logged into our server, we have to create three files. So I'm just gonna do a split screen here. And the first file we'll need to create is called docker-composed.yml. So I'm going to copy all the contents of this file. Back in our server, I'll type sudo space nano space docker dash compose dot yml i'll paste in all the contents and i'll exit out which will save this file so you see at the bottom left here to exit out it's control x then prompts you to save press y and enter The next file we're creating is this .env file. Once again, copying all the contents. sudo nano .env. This time, I'm going to be changing a couple of values here. Provide a valid email address. Feel free to update your time zone. If you're in America, you would prefix this first half with America forward slash, and then the city, new underscore York is my time zone. And you can just do a quick Google search for TM underscore TZ equals and use this one as an example to find which one's closest to you. And then we're gonna be updating where it says example.com to be the domain that we just procured. In my example, it's robstesla.com. So we're replacing the example with whatever domain we purchased. You'll notice that there's two lines here, one for Grafana and one for TeslaMate. These subdomains are what the TeslaMate application runs on and provides you with the insights, which is the Grafana end with all the dashboards, and the actual data storage component, which is TeslaMate. We'll exit out with a control X and press Y to save. Enter. The next step is to create a HT password. And this is going to be the password that will prompt anyone that tries to go to your website before they can actually access any of the content. This is great because it provides you with privacy. Um, otherwise, everything would be wide open to the world. But because we're passwording it, no one can access it but you from anywhere in the world. So let's say you're on your mobile device if you try to log into the server, it's gonna prompt you. And if you can't log in properly, you won't get very far. So let's click this link here for HT access tools. And this is going to allow us to generate a strong password. So for this, we can enter whatever username and whatever password we want. This is going to be what shows up on a browser that blocks anyone from accessing this website except for you. So I'm just gonna 
enter any username I want, any password I want. And I'll choose the Apache specified salted MD5. And as you can see, this hosting Canada.org generator, they don't store any of this data. They just use it to generate what the HT password file should contain. So as you can see, I have this string, which has my username to the left, separated by a colon, along with a password. So whatever username and password you entered here, they're not even going to be stored on your server at all. So it's really, really awesome that it's able to translate what we're typing in and keep everything completely secure on the server side. So copy the entire string And now we're going to be creating a brand new file called .ht password. So once again, sudo nano .ht password. P A S S W D. We'll paste in that string. Do a control X to save out. Y and enter. Okay. The next thing we need to do is install Docker Compose. We'll copy this text right here, the apt install docker dash compose space dash Y. And that's going to install the Docker Compose application. And while that's installing, head back over to Volter, click on products and then click on the DNS button. We're going to be entering this IP address here, so you may want to copy it before you hop on over there. DNS, and then click Add Domain. My domain is going to be robstesla.com, and the IP address is the one we just copied a second ago. Okay, so this first record here, we see it's blank, and that means it's the non-www version of the website. So it's robstesla.com. If we wanna also be able to access this website with www, we would type under name here, www. Once again, the same IP address, and press the add record button. Let's also add are two required subdomains, Grafana, G-R-A-F-A-N-A. -A -A. We'll paste in our IP address again, add the record, and finally, Tesla Mate. Paste in the IP, add record. looks good. So we have our Grafana subdomain, our Tesla mate subdomain, our main website, which is the non www and then the www version. Perfect. So before we proceed any further, I just want to make sure this domain is actually propagated to the server. Hop over to Google and search for domain propagation. Click on the first option here and just paste in your website, robstesla.com in my example. And we can see that it looks good. It's been propagated. So this is the IP address that's correlated back to this particular domain. All green. If yours isn't all green, just feel free to give it more time. It might depend on the current server load across the world when it comes to domains and making sure the IP addresses are showing up properly. So mine's all set. So now that we have our subdomains that are all good to go, we have our website all set up. The final step is to launch our Docker application. Let's copy this text down here, which is the Docker compose up dash D. Press enter. 
And now it's going to begin unpacking the Tesla Mate application onto our server using the Docker container functionality. This should only take a couple of minutes. All right, once you're back to the, the root screen here where you can start typing in text, you're good to go. So now I'm going to just expand this one window. So my main domain is robstesla.com. It's just parked out there. There's no information. But when I prefix that with a subdomain of teslamate.com, robstesla.com. You can see the screen line issue with the cert, not a big deal. Just go ahead and proceed forward. That just means when it tried to obtain the SSL certificate, it wasn't able to for our new domain. And that could be, you know, maybe it's just not ready yet. Um, as you can see, this sign-in screen just popped up now, which means it's good to go. This is the sign-in screen that the HT password file is controlling. So we won't be typing in that long string of text. We'll be typing in the username and password that we entered right here. So the simple one, not the complex one that's actually stored in our server, but this will translate back to this. So I'll type in Robbie JD, which is my username and then my password. And now we are logged into Tesla mate and it's prompting us for our Tesla credentials at this point. Um, keep in mind, this is completely safe. You can see that now it is secure. So everything that we transmit is just, it's super secure. It's been encrypted. And Tesla Mate doesn't actually store your password. It just stores the token. So I'll type in my Tesla login information. And this should match exactly what you're using for your Tesla app on your phone. I'll sign in. And it's saying my Tesla is asleep. So it hasn't yet communicated with the Tesla. So it has no idea where it is. So I'll just go ahead and wake it up using the app on my phone. Give it a couple seconds. Okay, it's now awake on my phone. And I'll reload this screen. So it still hasn't pinged the Tesla. Give it a few more seconds. And there it is, it showed up. So it's showing the car is online for how long it's been online, what the range is, and all sorts of other goodies about the Tesla. I'm currently based in the States, so I'm gonna toggle the kilometers over to miles. So I'll click settings. Scroll down change the units to miles and the temperature to Fahrenheit. All everything we just did was saved automatically. So I'm going to go back home. All right. So let's check out some of the dashboards. So if I go to Grafana, G R A F A N A dot Rob's Tesla.com. It's going to prompt me to log in. This login is admin admin click login and because it's the first login we'll now change it to a new password so use whatever you'd like here save and because this is a fresh install there won't be really any data of use on these dashboards but in order to get to your dashboards click on manage and then the Tesla mate folder. And here we have a whole slew of dashboards that you can use to analyze the data on your Tesla. So in my case, if I just click on overview, I could see a couple of inter interesting little facts here, but obviously as the data collection 
continues on. We'll get more and more data over time. So that's how you can quickly set up your domain and get it hooked into Teslamate. Um, like I mentioned, this is completely secure. It's going to prompt anyone that tries to log in with a password. Um, just to show you again, using Safari, if I go to teslamate.robstesla.com, it's prompting me now to log in using this form here. So no one from the public will be able to access your Tesla data except for you. And I'm logged in. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to subscribe and give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so they can also get all their amazing data that their Tesla puts out into their hands and onto these awesome dashboards. Thank you. I'll see you in the next one.